Right. Um, hi, I'm Richard Wood. I'm head of modelling and analytics at uh, Bristol North Somerset South Gloss uh, CCG. That's cl Clinical Commissioning Group. And I'm going to spend a few minutes today talking about healthcare data and uses. So starting off with what data we have, we have a number of different data sets uh, that are available to us. Um, a lot of activity level data, whether it's in secondary care, community care, mental health, uh, as well as diagnostic information about patient uh, contacts with the healthcare systems. Um, we have in information on performance, so this is around things like referral to treatment times and for our uh, A&E targets. Um, we have patient level information on GP registration, um, including the age and sex, limited information there of patients um, uh, that are, are registered at GP practices. Um, and also um, we have data uh, from GP practices in a bit more depth around clinical conditions um, as well as social information. There's a rich repository of, of, of data that is uh, collected and stored by GPs. As well as that, there are a number of other data sets available, wider determinants of health type data on education attainment and stuff. Often these are aggregated at ward level. ONS data as well around population projections, as well as uh, as well as estimates of um, of of uh, of of, of uh, different demographics um, in in the population. A lot of this data, not all of it, is flows um, uh, centrally up to NHS Digital, which combine data sets from a variety of sources. Um, they then distribute this data to NHS organisations, including clinical commissioning groups, as well as universities and other independent sector providers which have an interest in this data. At Bristol North Somerset and South Gloss CCG, we are committed to making best uh, use of data. Uh, we believe in insights driven evidence based decision making and that this is best enabled by having good quality data. Recently we have undertaken work to link together data sets. A number of healthcare systems around the UK are, have done this and are in the process of doing it. Uh, and, and we have recently um, uh, produced a, a linked data set across our system for our one million population. Um, and this is really valuable be because uh, we need to move away from working in silos to working in a more joined up manner. So examples of this would be the um, integrated care system program that different healthcare systems are being pushed along, um, as well as STPs and more recently uh, population health management and interest in that. Now, um, in terms of the data, this means moving from uh, analysing and, and uh, approaching data from a point of delivery basis where we look at just secondary care data in, in isolation to mental health data. Um, to actually cutting across those different points of delivery and being able to understand uh, patients' interactions and consumption of activity across different pathways, across different settings. In Bristol North Somerset and South Gloss, our data flows um, combine uh, data from a number of different points of delivery. We have primary care data, which comes in from the GP practices and is put on our servers, and that is complemented by data from um, uh, secondary care, mental health and community services, which flows the national, through the national route and then back down into the CCG. This is all then linked at the CCG uh, into a fully system-wide linked data set. Just picking um, off, let's say, mental health, there is a, this is a very complex data set. There's about 40 tables in this data set and we have to invest quite a bit of time and effort to actually make sense of this and bring all of this complex data together uh, in a way that we can uh, interrogate it and, and use it meaningfully. Um, the opportunity is to move, as I say, away from that point of delivery lens, working in silos, to uh, more of an integrated approach. And we can see this through a number of lens, uh, a patient lens, a person lens, pathway, and population level. So 
To pick up on the patient lens, theoplots are a way that we understand um, patient uh, interaction with the healthcare services at different points. And we use theoplots to essentially understand how patients are using care from different resources over time and ultimately to test hypotheses as well as identify new ones. So this might be around, for example, um, a seeing a big gap in, let's say, mental health service use, followed by a very long non-elective admission, uh, which was due to a mental health crisis, and then being picked up in the mental health service. So we can start to ask and 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 analyse why why if this if uh, the patient could have been in the mental health service before, would this have uh, have prevented this very uh, costly and uh, spell that has been bad for the patient when they've been in hospital for, for a significant amount of time. Um, moving on to a pathway level, uh, there are a uh, number of pathways that cut across um, uh, different uh, points of delivery in, in the healthcare service. Um, by understanding those typical pathways, for example, a knee replacement or hip replacement pathway, we can start to understand questions like how long is this pathway in terms of days, weeks or months? How much does it cost us? Um, and for the patient, do they need to be, um, uh, for example, uh, have so many follow-up appointments? Is this activity duplicative um, and is it necessary? And is it ultimately the best value uh, for the population? Um, moving to a population level, this is a, a much higher uh, level that we analyse data and we um, uh, do this by segmenting the population to understand the uh, patient groups of, of similar need and, um, and, and we look to understand differences both within the, in these different segments and, and, and between them and this gives us a way to, uh, to um, understand the different types of patients and their activity uh, consumption. And ultimately, if we can understand more around the different types of need within our healthcare system, we can wrap around more tailored interventions. So for example, the frailty segment might be more amenable to a frailty hub or frailty service that can best meet the needs of, of that particular cohort. It's no substitute for looking at things at an individual basis. Of course, everyone are, everyone are individuals, but it gives us a way to cut through the complexity of what is quite a, a, a big data set, a big amount of data in understanding the, the key needs that drive differences in the population. And there are a number of other useful insights that we can get. We can understand uh, how long-term conditions the require, requiring of those um, change as patients age, as people age, and look to um, inform interventions that can be put in place to either prevent or delay acquiring certain long-term conditions. Um, we can understand multimorbidity and um, the confluence of different long-term conditions and how those can be managed. And we can understand who are the highest users of um, activity within the population and put in place uh, uh, tailored interventions uh, to, to best meet their needs. Um, so a recent finding, for instance, has been that 1% uh, of, of the population in Bristol, North Somerset and South Gloss consume as much non-elective resource as the remaining 99%. So how can we better meet the needs of, of, of that cohort? So, uh, so that's it. That's uh, a very whistle-stop tour of healthcare data in the NHS.